spinach dip in a bread bowl. Welcome to Rain's Kitchen and Garden. My name is Rain. Today I'm sharing my recipe for an easy spinach dip. I'm also going to show you how I make my bread bowl to serve the dip. This is a fun party dip appetizer idea and it tastes delicious. Here are the ingredients that you'll need for the bread bowl spinach dip. I have one cup or 225 grams of sour cream half a cup or 130 grams of ranch dressing, a large cup or about 300 grams of blanched spinach. Now I bought this spinach fresh. It was in those 10 ounce plastic bins and I bought two of them. So this is 20 ounces of fresh spinach blanched. I have a 227 milliliter can of water chestnuts. I chopped them up and it comes to about a cup or 143 grams. In this little bowl here, I have an eighth of a teaspoon each of powdered basil and powdered oregano. Now, I have been told that this dip could use a little bit of salt. I personally don't use salt, so please go ahead and salt it if you think that it needs salt. Make it to your taste, but make sure you taste along the way because you might want to add more basil, you might want to add more oregano, you might want to add pepper or hot sauce. Just take the basic recipe do what you like with it and make it to your taste buds. And of course, you're going to need a round loaf of bread. The first thing I'll show you is how I make this loaf of bread. This is my overnight no knead bread. So you'll have to start the bread the night before you want to serve your dip. Now, if you already have a round loaf of bread, feel free to skip ahead to the section where I show you how to make the dip. Today, I'm making very easy no need white bread. This is an overnight bread. You start it on day one, leave it in the fridge overnight, and then bake it the next day. It is a little time consuming, but it's so easy. Like the title says, there is no kneading and you get a great result. Let me show you how I make it. The first thing that we're going to do for our overnight no need white bread is to proof our yeast. In my measuring cup I have one and three quarter cups of water that's 425 mils and I've heated it to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit that's about 37 degrees Celsius and I'm going to add some dry active yeast one and a half teaspoons or seven grams or is that active dry yeast? <laughs> I always get mixed up when I'm saying active dry or dry active. Now I'm just sprinkling it in. You don't want to just dump it in because it'll make clumps. So just sprinkle it in. And I'm going to just take a fork and mix all of that up. I'm going to let that sit for 10 minutes until it gets nice and foamy. My yeast is nice and foamy, so I'm sure that it's fine. I'm going to set that aside for now, and I've got a large bowl here, and inside my bowl I have all-purpose flour. I have three and a half cups, that's 537 grams of unbleached all-purpose flour, and I have some salt, two teaspoons or 16 grams. And I'm just going to whisk that all up together. And I'm going to make a little well in the center. All right, so into that I'm going to add my yeast. I'm just going to give it a little stir with a rubber spatula and pour it in. Make sure I got everything out there. And I'm going to mix all of that up with my rubber spatula until I get a soft, sticky dough. Well, that's a nice, soft, sticky dough. And if you look at the bottom of the bowl, I don't have any flour left so it's very nicely incorporated. What I'm going to do is just cover it with some cling film. Okay. 
and with a tea towel because I want it to be nice and warm and I'm going to let that rise for one hour in a warm spot. Now the warmest spot in my house right now is inside the microwave so I generally always put my dough inside the microwave so that it will rise properly. Into the microwave it goes for one hour. Okay let's take a look at our dough. It's doubled that's for sure. It's looking pretty good. Just going to put a little bit of flour on the top. A little flour on my surface here and I'm going to dump it out. Now if it um, sticks just use a spatula. Get a wet spatula just dip it in water and use the spatula to take your bread out okay and with wet hands because it's the best way with this dough is to have wet hands so nothing sticks I'm just punching it down. Get all the air bubbles out of there okay so then what I'm going to do is kind of fold it in three Fold it in three again, turn it over, and that is it. I've got some light tasting olive oil here that I'm just going to pour a tiny little bit in my bowl, move that around, and put my dough inside the oiled bowl, okay? And I'm going to turn that around a couple of times so that the oil gets all over it. And I'm going to put my cling film back on top. My hands are very oily right now. So everything's kind of slippy. <laughs> and my tea towel goes on top as well. And I'm going to put that back into a warm spot so that it will rise for another hour. All right, another hour has passed. So we're going to basically repeat the same process. Look at how that's risen. It's right up to the top of the bowl. So I'm just going to put a little bit of flour down on my work surface so nothing sticks. And I'm going to turn that out and it should plop right out. Yeah, look at that. Oh, it's so big. Look at that bubble. <laughs> All right, floured hands. Punch it down, get all that air out of there, and we're basically going to do the same thing. We're going to fold it in three, fold it in three, turn it over, push it down a little, fold it in three, and then make a little ball. Okay? And then it goes right back into the bowl. If you need more oil, go ahead and put more oil in it, but there should be enough. And then we're going to put the cling film back on. And that goes into the fridge overnight. So this is all we can do for day one. This is going to sit in the fridge overnight. And if you're in a hurry to make the bread, I've done this. I've started it in the morning. And I've left it in the fridge for about six hours and I've baked it that night. But there's another one hour rising time when we take this out of the fridge. So keep all of that in mind. Well, my dough has been sitting in the fridge overnight and it's looking pretty good. It's doubled in size. Looks great. I'm just going to put that aside for now and I'm going to prepare my baking dish. Now this is a nine inch round Pyrex baking pan and if you're wondering it's three inches high okay from top to bottom I find that this pan is perfect for this no need bread I've tried baking this in different size pans in rectangle pans square pans but this is by far my favorite and I'm sure that if you have a Dutch oven you could use your Dutch oven I don't have a Dutch oven but one day I hope I will because the first half of the baking time we're going to be covering this very tightly with foil but a Dutch oven will have a top which will work perfectly but I want to show you since we are going to be using foil a little tip okay I have two pieces of foil here because I need two one isn't isn't wide enough so I'm just doing this a 
Okay, so now I have the outline of the top of my pan. And when it co time comes for greasing it, I know where to grease the top of the pan, okay? So that's just a little trick for you because we are going to have to grease the top so it doesn't stick onto the bread. But I just wanted to show you to do that before you start greasing your pan. Now I'm going to be greasing it with unsalted butter. I've melted this just a little bit so that it's um, workable. I don't recommend using oil. I'm going to leave it up to you to butter with whatever, or not butter, to grease your pan with whatever you want to grease it with. But I'm just going to tell you, in my experience, when I've used oil, the bread stuck terribly to the pan and I couldn't get it out. I had to chisel it out. <laughs> it actually baked on to the pan. It wasn't really pleasant and I kind of ruined my bread that way. So my preferred greasing is using butter. And I'm doing the top as well because the bread will rise in the oven as it's cooking. But we are also going to let this rise one more time before we put it in the oven. Okay, so I've got my dough that I'm just going to plop right in. There we go. Let me move this aside. And I'm just I'm putting a little bit of butter on my fingers just so it doesn't stick to my fingers. And I'm just going to push that down. Not too much. And I'm going to put a little bit of butter on the top because we're going to cover this with cling film and I don't want anything to stick. It's a lot of butter, but boy, does this taste good. I'm going to leave those air bubbles there. They're going to squish down at some point. There they go. All right. And I've got some cling, filled all, cling film all prepared here. Just going to cover that up. And I'm going to put that in a warm spot and let that rise for one more hour. My bread is about ready to bake, so I'm just going to butter that foil that's going to be covering the bread. Because whenever I make this bread, it does stick to the top of the foil, so I have to make sure that I've got it nice and buttered. There, has, there was one time when I made this bread and I forgot to butter the foil. And when I tried to take it off halfway through the baking, it actually pulled the crust off the top of the bread. <laughs> so I highly recommend that you grease the top of your foil. There we go. You could do this ahead of time and just stick it in the fridge just so it stays nice and buttered up. Okay, I'll just put it over here. Now look at our bread. It's ready to go. Now before I put the foil on top, I'm just gonna take a sharp knife and I'm gonna cut a few slits into the bread. I had actually a kitchen razor that I purchased after I started making my baguettes and I've searched high and low and I cannot find it and I'm very upset. <laughs> I'm going to have to get another one. So I'm just going to put the foil on top and seal that really well. Now this baking pan, this round baking glass pan, does come with a top. But the problem is the bread is going to rise during the baking and the top will just, it'll just stick to the top. That's why I'm sealing it really tightly with foil. So that's ready to go into my preheated oven that I preheated to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 260 Celsius or gas mark 10. Now, with my oven, I have an old wonky oven. I've put a thermometer in there. It never really gets up to 500. You really want to try to get it as high as you can get it. And I've set it for 500, but it doesn't mean it's going to hit 500. So basically, I have a pizza stone in my oven all of the time. And the pizza stone in the oven helps to add more heat to the oven. So 
whatever temperature it reaches, the highest that it gets, usually it's only around 475. But I'm going to bake this for 25 minutes at, hoping, 500 degrees Fahrenheit. And at the 25 minute mark, I'm going to take this out, remove the foil, and put it back into the oven. Okay, we're at the halfway mark of the baking time. So what I've done is I've turned my oven down to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 230 degrees Celsius or gas mark 8. And I'm going to very carefully take the foil off of my pan. Now it's going to be hot. Please be careful of your fingers and there might be some steam that comes out. Really, really be careful. I mean, my hands are used to hot. So I'm okay with this, but you don't want to burn your fingers. All right. So that's what it looks like right now. And I'm going to put it back into the oven for 25 more minutes until it's a deep golden brown. If it takes longer, it takes longer, but usually between 25 and 30 minutes, you should be good. To blanch my spinach, I just put it into a pot of boiling water, give it a good stir, and let it boil for about two minutes, and then I drain it and let it cool a little bit. I like to run my blanched spinach through my food processor just for a little bit to make sure that it gets really well blended into the dip. <coughs> This dip is so easy to make, my friends. You just need a medium-sized or large bowl and mix all the ingredients together. Very, very simple. So I've got my sour cream here, one cup, and I use full fat sour cream, but you can use whatever you like. And I've got my ranch dressing. There we go all that ranch dressing. It smells really good already. I'm actually going to put my, my, not my spices, my herbs in and mix all that up with the sour cream and the ranch dressing so that there are no lumps of basil and oregano. I like to use powdered herbs because I find sometimes when I buy the regular oregano and basil, not so much the basil, but oregano, there are little woody pieces in it, and I don't like tasting that, so I don't like biting into that. So it's as if I can find powdered herbs and spices, I always get them powdered. All right, so now I'm going to add the spinach. Plop. And my water chestnuts. I love water chestnuts because they make the dip a little crunchy. So I'm going to fold all that together to make the dip. I may need to get a fork out to separate the, um, the spinach. I'm going to use a fork. I think that'll work better. That works better. I always make this dip on Christmas Eve. <laughs> it's a great dip. And when it, uh, when it stays in the bread bowl for a while, the flavor starts to sink into the, the sides of the bread and it just tastes so good after when you're eating up the bowl. <laughs> really well. Oh, it smells really good. I love the ranch dressing in this. All right, that's mixed very, very well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some cling film on top of that. 
and put that in the fridge for at least an hour before I fill it into my bread bowl. So while the dip is chilling, I'm going to prepare my loaf. So I want to slice off about one to one and a half inch slice off the top of the loaf. So here I go. stuck on one side. There we go. Okay. I see where I forgot to. There we go. So now, oh look, we've got a little air pocket. <laughs> I'm going to set this aside because I'm actually going to cut this up to be able to use to dip into the bread bowl. So what I want to do is I want to hollow out the bread bowl. So you can just rip it out if you want, but I'm trying to make it look kind of pretty because I want to use the bread as, as a dipping agent, <laughs> for lack of a better term. So I'm just taking a little knife and I'm kind of uh, cutting around. I'm trying not to cut down through the loaf. Oh, my cat tried to jump up on the counter. <laughs> This isn't for you. This is not for kitties. All right, now I've got my spoon and I'm just gonna try to lift out the bread. And hopefully I didn't cut through. Now it's easier to cut all this when the bread isn't 100% fresh. I baked it this morning, but I left it. Uh, on the counter to cool and then I put it in the fridge for a little bit so it's easier when it's cool. It's still nice and fresh though. A little elbow grease and it's gonna work. Now with this dip you don't have to just serve the bread to dip with. You can serve fresh veggies, crackers, Oh, look at that. So there's my bread bowl. And now I can cut this part up too. I might just hollow it out a little bit. There we go. Now we have our bread bowl. And what you could do, this inside part, like I said, I'm going to slice it up or cube it up. But when it's, when the dip is inside, you can actually close it up. And when you present it, to your guests, you can say, oh, would you like some spinach dip? <laughs> that might be fun. All right, I'm gonna fill up my bread bowl now. All of my dogs are milling around me <laughs> because they can smell the food. I'm sure they're gonna get a little bit of this. Maybe not the dip part, but at least a little bit of the bread. This is going to be so delicious. I can't wait. <laughs> This is like a meal in itself. I wouldn't say it would be a healthy meal, but 
I could definitely have this dip for dinner. All right, let me just make it look pretty here. There we go. Doesn't this look great? You can really impress your guests when you make this easy, fun, and delicious dip. And the best part, you get to eat the bowl. I hope you enjoyed this video today, my friends. And if you did, please give it a like and please do subscribe. If you don't want to miss out on future videos, don't forget to hit the notification bell for more home cooking. And don't forget to leave me a comment. I love your comments and I reply to all of them. And please share this video with anyone you might think will enjoy it. Thanks again for watching, my friends, and I'll see you next time on Rain kitchen and garden. Bye!